Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my standard review of the newest lens from Tamron, which is an 11 to 20 millimeter f2.8 DI3-A, which means it's made for APS-C mirrorless cameras, in this case, a Sony APS-C E-mount, and it has an RXD focus motor, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. Now this lens, of course, is a very welcome follow-up to a lens that I reviewed back in January, which was the 17 to 70 millimeter f2.8 RXD, also for Sony uh, full-frame mirrorless. The reason why I say it's so welcome is that there has been relatively little development, either first party or third party, for a Sony APS-C, despite the fact that it's a very, very popular platform. It's always kind of puzzled me a bit how that APS-C gets so little development and, you know, and yet people continue to buy the cameras. And so it's really great to see in this year, uh, I've seen for the first time in the last several years, some really active development um, on Sony APS-C, both from Tamron to uh, zoom lenses, premium zoom lenses at this point, and then also the uh, Samyang 12 millimeter F2 autofocusing uh, lens. It also had weather sealing and a few more professional type features uh, that I reviewed a couple of months ago. And so uh, really a great, a great time if you're a Sony APS-C shooter to get some quality lenses. And this certainly is a quality Quality lens. There are relatively few competitors to this lens in that Sony has had for quite a while a 10 to 18 millimeter f4 OS lens, but that lens uh, is obviously has a maximum aperture of f4, not quite an identical focal length, but most importantly, it doesn't have near the image quality that this particular lens does. And it doesn't have weather, weather sealing or some of those professional grade features that sets this lens and this new series of lenses apart. And so I suspect that this is going to be another very welcome lens for those that are APS-C shooters. This focal length is obviously, as I noted, is designed for mirrorless. And so 11 millimeters roughly corresponds to about 16 and a half millimeters on full frame. If you uh, look at uh, you know, the APS-C 1.5 times crop on Sony and 20 millimeters corresponds to 30 millimeters on full frame. And so essentially you have a lens similar to you know, the many professional grade 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 zooms that we've seen for basically every major full frame platform but never any kind of direct replacement for that on APS-C. So as I noted, a very welcome lens on that front. It's not an inexpensive lens, but at a little over 800 US dollars, it's a relatively affordable lens, but most importantly, it's a premium lens that's at a reasonable to performance and features price. So as we have seen, there are some standard elements that are a part of Tamron's uh, designs here. And essentially what we are seeing is them taking their now expertise that they've developed that began with the 28 to 75 millimeter F2.8 RXD on uh, full frame um, FE. And they've now translated that into these APS-C lenses. So they're following kind of a tried and true formula. And what that includes is a 67 millimeter front filter thread and so you can share filters across uh, now uh, quite a wide number of lenses available for APS-C. And it has weather sealing, which starts at the a gasket at the lens mount. There are internal seal points and a flooring coating on the front element to help to resist oil and moisture, fingerprints, things like that. About seven different seal points throughout. And so that obviously is very welcome. You have a nice build here that um, has, you know, a lot of metal innards, mostly engineered plastics on the outside, no switches or buttons here. So as far as features go, you know, not as much as what we see on some premium lenses for full frame, but we've also seen on Sony APS-C that it's pretty common to not have all of those bells and whist whistles. So kind of par for the course there. There are only two rings that are on here, and so the first is the zoom ring. One thing I will point out as a, a minor complaint is that the 17 to 70 millimeters had the manual focus ring closest to the camera and the zoom ring out further towards the front of the lens. Those two rings are reversed in terms of their position on this lens. I always hate to see that for the simple reason that people that buy multiple lenses, buy both lenses, which I'm sure Tamron would love for you to do, 
uh, you, you kind of lose some of that muscle memory where you, you know, if you use one lens in particular, you reach for that zoom ring, say, at a certain position, and you might find the opposite there. So I do prefer for consistency's sake, you know, for them to be in the same position. I'm sure that this was a design necessity based on the optical formula for this particular lens. Nonetheless, still a minor complaint on uh, from my perspective. The zoom ring here, it works nice and smooth. Um, there's no wobble or anything, no uh, sticking point. Everything moves nicely. The lens itself grows about two um, centimeters when it is in the 11 millimeter position. It's actually at the most retracted position at the 20 millimeter uh, position. The overall lens dimensions, 73 millimeters in diameter and 86.2 millimeters in length. The whole lens weighs in about 335 grams. And so that makes it a, you know, a fairly, still fairly compact lens, certainly relative to the 17 to 70 millimeter, which I thought was on kind of the large side for APS-C mirrorless. So this is going to be obviously a lens you can easily pack around, take it for travel, take it out hiking, all of those things, and you won't run into any uh, you know, unnecessary burdens carrying it. It does come with a lens hood, and that lens hood is, is uh, we call it tulip shaped, petal shaped. It is fairly shallow, as is common for wide angle lenses, and it's a little bit wider than the diameter of the lens. So I do note that when you reverse it for storage, you do, it's a little, takes up just a slightly bit more space in your camera bag because of the extra width of the lens hood. As noted, that's pretty common for a wide angle zoom lens. Outside of that, however, everything operates here just fine. The manual focus ring actually has a nicer feel than what I felt on the 17 to 70 millimeter. It's not a linear focus ring, and so it will change depending upon your focus speed. So a little bit less repeatable for those of you that are video oriented. If you are video oriented though, you'll be very happy to hear that the autofocus is fantastic. I've been completely satisfied with every lens from Tamron that has an RXD focus motor, which is a, you know, a linear motor, stepping motor, but with a lot of refinement. And so there's plenty of torque there, lots of speed. So your focus changes are basically instantaneous. And also it is just utterly silent in operation. And so, um, you know, you can see from my uh, focus pull test that there is no noise at all in operation. So all you hear there is environmental sounds and you can also see the, the nice confidence there is in focus pulls, no settling or pulsing, anything like that. Also, I noted that it did a good job of tracking my face as I approached the camera and just in testing that out on an A6400, did a great job there, no problems, no complaints. When it comes to the image quality from the lens, um, it really delivers across the zoom range. Now, the MTF suggests that the lens is slightly stronger at 11 millimeters and just a hair less strong at 20 millimeters. I actually didn't find that in my own particular test. I actually found that the lens was weakest, at least this copy that I reviewed, at 11 millimeters, although it was still very good. It got better as it progressed and hit, as, hit its peak somewhere around 18 millimeters. And, but then 20 millimeters was almost as good as the peak. And so really great consistency at 14, 16, 18, and 20 millimeters, with just slightly less performance at 11 millimeters, particularly in the corners of the frame. But throughout the zoom range, what I saw was extremely good uh, contrast and detail in the center of the frame, and only a slight reduction most of the time towards the corner of the frame. And so you get nicely detailed images from it, uh, both distortion and vignette are very nicely controlled with some barrel distortion wide open, but fortunately linear, so quite easy to correct. And already there are correction profiles in camera and available already in Adobe, uh, at least, that uh, give you an automatic correction type profile for JPEGs and video in camera, and then of course for RAW files in post-processing. So it, I, I manually correct mostly just to determine, you know, to kind of test how much distortion is there, but I found it an easy correction because it's not a complex distortion pattern. Uh, at 11 millimeters, the uh, vignette is on the low side of moderate, um, about a stop and a half or so. But as you move towards a 20 millimeter, it inverts to a slight bit of pincushion distortion, but again, very linear and even easier to correct. 
and the vignette drops down to only around a, a stop in the corners and so that's going to be a non-issue even without correction in almost all situations. I also found that chromatic aberrations were non-existent basically. I saw neither longitudinal nor lateral chromatic aberrations. No problem with that there. And the bokeh quality is actually fairly decent as well. Obviously this is not the type of lens that you're often going to produce a lot of bokeh, but you do have the option of getting quite close to your subject. And in fact, like many recent Tamron zoom lenses, you can actually get closer at the wide end, 11 millimeters, than what you can at the 20 millimeter end. So they have two different minimum focus distances with the higher magnification being at the 11 millimeters. However, you have to get so close to achieve that figure at 11 millimeters that you can't even have the lens hood attached because you only have uh, about two and a half centimeters remaining to the subject. Um, once you, you know, you're at the 11 millimeter position, because remember the lens is the longest at that point. And so it means that it's almost impossible to get that magnification without tremendous shading. And you also get some pretty severe field curvature to where only a small portion of the image is um, actually in focus. So I didn't find that incredibly useful for real world use. That gets you as high as 0 0.25 uh, times magnification. The figure at uh, 20 millimeters, the magnification is less high, somewhere around 0.14 times. So I felt like in my test is actually a little bit better than that. Nonetheless, I found the performance was excellent with a very flat plane of focus and a very nice detail. And even for real world shots, it delivered great performance. Either way, it, you can get close enough at any one of the various focal lengths here to get a decent kind of magnification. And so that's useful um, for that front. The only thing that I was critical of in my image quality test is that I found, despite having the B-bar coatings and the second generation of them, this lens is not nearly as flare resistant as what I expected it to be. And I found that, particularly as you start to stop the lens down, it is quite prone to some ghosting blobs and various artifacts like that. And so, you know, I'm less than delighted at that performance. Uh, on the upside, there are seven rounded aperture blades that do produce a decent looking sun star, as you might have seen in some of those images uh, when the lens is stopped down, as long as you can eliminate that flare at the same time. Coma performance is also quite good, and I think that this is a very valid lens for shooting the night sky and does kind of provide a niche there in that, you know, an f4 lens is not really all that great for that kind of performance. And so this gives us, you know, a higher performance astrophotography lens for those that are looking for a zoom that can also shoot the night sky night sky. There's a little bit of stretching in the very corners of some star points, but very little coma itself. And so I found it to deliver sharp, crisp looking uh, night sky images. So a lot of good things optically for the lens. Autofocus is great. And the handling and the size, the form factor is also very good. And so obviously this provides a, also a nice option for those that like to shoot APS-C but want to shoot events or weddings, various other low light kind of settings because you can get great detail even at f2.8. And because of the nature of the focal length and an APS-C body, you get a lot in focus most of the time. And so that of course uh, increases its value for that setting where you want to get a detailed scene with some depth to it of things being in focus but you want to keep your shutter speed down as well. This lens really enables you to do that and is well worth your consideration. I'm Dustin Abbott and if you look in the description down below you can find linkage to my full text review. You can also find linkage there to an image gallery if you want to check out photos. There are some buying links there though some of them are still being populated as this lens is not yet released to the public but if you'll uh, check back those will become available and places like BNH are already ready to go. You can also find linkage there to follow me on social media to become a patron, purchase some of my merchandise, uh, sign up for my newsletter, and of course if you haven't already please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Be sure to ring that bell and so you get notifications when new content drops. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.